So the title of my sermon this morning is Spoken For. We are spoken for. Amen? Whether you are saved or not, you are spoken for. It doesn't mean if you are unsaved that you will go to heaven, but we are spoken for. Which means that the enemy, you know what, has no legal hold or right to us unless we give it to him. Amen, church. And so I want you to know and understand as we go into the sermon that we are spoken for. You and I are spoken for. That is why it's so easy for unsaved people when they get saved that their lives change. Have you noticed? If, if a Genuine salvation, true salvation. When people get saved, their lives change. Like-minded. My life changed. You know, I'm not the person I used to be. You know, but you know what? I committed my life to the Lord and I, 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 I stopped doing the things I used to do. So my life changed. Why? Because... I was spoken for before the creation of the world. I was spoken for. Right? The Bible says, Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5, Before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you. I sanctified you. I made you holy. I called you. Amen. So we were uh, a thought long before we came into this physical world. We were more than a thought. God already knew us. He knew what we would be. He knew the blueprint for our lives. And it is up to us now uh, to complete that. Amen. So let us get into this. Uh, Mark chapter 9, 14 to 29. Remember last week we spoke about legion. All right. And um, I just, so let us look at the scripture quickly. It says, when they came to the other disciples, they saw a large crowd around them and the teachers of the law arguing with them. This was some of Jesus' disciples. As soon as all the people saw Jesus, they were overwhelmed with wonder and ran to greet him. What are you arguing with them about? He asked. A man in the crowd answered, Teacher, I brought you my son who is possessed by a spirit that has robbed him of speech. Whenever it seizes him, it throws him into the ground. He foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth, and becomes rigid. I asked your disciples to drive the spirit out, but they could not. Let's stop there just for a moment. So now we know what they were arguing about. They were arguing about the situation here. The demon-possessed boy, the father that brought his son to Jesus, and the Pharisees that were trying to be difficult. That was the argument. You see, you know what? Jesus had to know what was going on before he could deal with the matter. You need to know what's going on in your life before you can deal with any matter in your life. Amen? You can't just go into a thing blindly, make a decision blindly. You need to know what is going on. And so when he heard what was going on and he assessed the situation, he knew exactly the way forward. So let's move on. You unbelieving generation, Jesus replied, how long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring the boy to me. And so they brought him. And when the spirit saw Jesus, it immediately threw the boy into a convulsion. He fell to the ground and rolled around, foaming at the mouth. Jesus asked the boy's father, how long has he been like this? From childhood, he answered, it has often thrown him into the fire or water to kill him. But if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. If you can, said Jesus, everything is possible for one who believes. Immediately, the boy's father exclaimed, I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. When Jesus saw that a crowd was running to the scene, he rebuked the impure spirit. You deaf and mute spirit, he said, I command you come out of him and never enter him again. The spirit shrieked, convulsed him violently and came out. The boy looked so much like a corpse that many said he's dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him to his feet and he stood up. And after Jesus had gone indoors, his disciples asked him privately, why couldn't we drive it out? And he replied, this kind can come out only by prayer. So we've got three um, uh, quotes here. Here's the first one. Who we are inwardly will always show up outwardly. Who we are inwardly will always show up outwardly. We need to mature to a place. Where it's not necessary for a preacher to tell you what's going on inside of you. Amen. You need to learn what is going on inside of you so that you can get rid of it. Let me tell you something. Whenever you have an addiction, you're going to have to fight it. It's not just going to leave. Next one quickly. 
Pray before you go into anything so that you will never have to pray yourself out of it. Pray before you go into anything so you will never have to pray yourself out of the same prayer you prayed yourself into. <laughs> Next one quickly. We are not a brand, we are a breed. Whether you're a black man, you're a white man, you're a colored man, you're an Indian man, you're a Chinese man, whatever man, woman you are, we are a breed. We come from the same place. We come from the same two people, Adam and Eve. Amen. Some people might not like to hear this, but we come from the same people, Adam and Eve. We are a breed. Whether you are South African, whether you are Nigerian, whether you are Zimbabwean, whether you are European, whether you are an American, whether you are an Aussie, whether you are South American, we are breed. We behave the same way, we feel the same way, we look the same way, we react the same way, but we hate each other. Because we've allowed the devil to infiltrate our lives and mess us up and change who we're actually supposed to be. And so a brand attracts popularity. A breed establishes legacy. Now the reason I put this here, I'll tell you why. Because the devil wants to change our legacy. Our legacy, here's our legacy. There's our legacy. We are sons and daughters who carry a godly lineage. That's our legacy. We are sons and daughters who carry a godly lineage. Every single person, you can call yourself an atheist, you can call yourself an agnostic, you can call yourself whatever you like. You cannot run away from the fact that you are made in God's image. You cannot. We carry a lineage. We carry a godly lineage. And that is what the devil is so, uh, so, so hard trying to change. But you can't change us because we're made in God's image. We are made in God's image. And so, you know what? Um, we are blessed beyond measure. Point number one. The works of God are attractive to those who need it. The works of God are attractive. Listen, you know what? Eh? If you need nothing from God, you will not press into him. You won't bother. There will be no need to because it's not attractive. The Bible says the people were overwhelmed when they saw Jesus. In actual fact, it says they were overwhelmed with wonder. Listen, they were there. Listen, they were there because the, the, the boy was there that was possessed. But every one of those people had their own problem. And they heard and they saw Jesus doing things to ordinary people. And they must have said to themselves, if he can do this to them, he can do it for me. So they were attracted they were attracted to the works of God. Amen, church? Amen. Do you know you and I can't worship here if the Holy Spirit is not here? We can't sing. We cannot even say Jesus without the Holy Spirit. These guys can't play this instrument without the Holy Spirit. I can't preach without this. The, the guys that prophesy can't prophesy without this. There will be no reason. Listen, there will be no reason for you to come in here and do anything diligently. Because there's almost no reason to do it. Amen. But the works of God are attractive to those who need it. Amen. I ask you this morning, what do you need from God? Because he's attractive. You saw I read the scripture there when Jesus, um, when, when, when he delivered the little boy, what did he say? You come out and you enter him no more. Amen. Because sometimes these demons think they have a legal right to come back. To come back and, in, and infiltrate and invade the body. Amen. So, the works of God are attractive to those who need it, to those who believe it. It's attractive. To those who respect it. To those who benefit from it. To those who are desperate for it. Amen? Can you see there's no negativity there? It's to those who believe it. Those who respect it. To those who benefit from it. To those who are desperate for it. The works of God. We need Him. We need the Lord. Miracles are our work. Signs and wonders are our work. The presence of God in our midst is a work. When God delivers somebody, it's a work. When He sets you free by way of salvation, it's a work. The cross was a work. It was a physical work. Something happened. Amen? The Holy Spirit coming to, to earth, it's a work. 
He's at work. The Holy Spirit is at work. Church is a work. That's what it is. The harder we work, the more blessed we are, the more anointed we are. It's a work and we cannot go without it. And the people were overwhelmed with wonder. The fact that they were overwhelmed with wonder already meant that they had faith. How beautiful is that? When the people saw Jesus, they were overwhelmed with wonder, while all the teachers of the law could do was argue with the people. You see, be wary of people who love to argue about the word. They are a distraction. Be careful of people who want to argue about the word and want to argue about doctrine and theology. They are distraction. They are nothing more than a distraction. That's why Jesus came. He said, what are you are arguing about? And they told him. They were now, they were actually debating about this boy and what should be done. They had their ideas and Jesus confounded their ideas. Because you know what? Did you notice he didn't argue about the word? He didn't even quote one scripture. He just said to the father whose son had the problem, bring the boy. The boy came. He spoke to the demon and the demon left. No theology. He spoke to what needed to be spoken to. Sometimes we work up a sweat in church to try and get things out of people. Amen? And there's no success because we're not talking to the proper spirit. And so we can't be scared of these things, but we're going to get into it as we go. Point number two. The teachers of the law could only manifest what was inside of them. They could only, listen, the men of God. These were the men of God. They could only manifest what was inside of them. The same like us. You cannot manifest something that is not inside of you. You can only manifest what is inside of you. And what was inside of these people was, was bad. Amen. Jesus had nothing to, good to say about them. He didn't hang out with them. You can check the Bible. He didn't associate with them because they were always coming at him. You see, who they were on the inside showed up on the outside. They were arguing with Jesus' disciples and the people because they had an issue with Jesus. They weren't arguing about the doctrine. They weren't arguing about the son. They had an issue with the man who could set the people free. They had an issue with the man that had the power because they didn't have the power. They would have liked to have had the power, but they did not have the power. Why didn't they have the power? Because the works of God was not attractive to them. Did you notice in the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they were always fighting against the works of God. The man with the withered hand was a problem. The guy at the pool of Bethesda was a problem. The blind guys that Jesus opened their eyes was a problem. Lazarus was a problem. They were so, I don't want to use the word fascinated, um, but maybe they were. So fascinated with Jesus for the wrong reason that they followed him wherever he went. And that is why the accounts can be written. Because they followed him wherever he went to try and stop him from bringing a Lazarus out of a tomb. From causing a withered hand to be healed on the Sabbath. From all of the miracles, they were trying at every avenue to stop the miracles from happening. And that is the work of the enemy. That's the work of Satan, isn't it? So, you see, the spirit in them wanted to dampen the people's spirits. Now I want to say to you, be careful who you hang out with. Be careful who you hang out with. Because if they don't build you up, they're going to pull you down. They're going to dampen your spirit. They are going to allow doubt and unbelief to come into your life. Amen. They are going to get you to erase the memory of miracles. So you see, there was an air of expectation because Jesus was coming. The focus was off them, it was on him. He was the one that was popular, they weren't. They didn't like it. Because for a long time they were in charge and in control. And now all of a sudden, this new rabbi comes with a new way of doing things. And um, it's not the way they used to do it. It's not the religious way. So it can't be right. And so, wherever you find evil, 
you will find contention. Wherever you find contention, you will find evil. And wherever you find evil, you will find contention. Because it's taking the focus off who you can be, what you can become, what you can be set free from. Jesus in the center, it will be contentious. Wherever you find peace, you'll find healing and restoration. Let's move to number three and we're going to close with this. And we're going to, now we get to the stuff. Demons come to rob and to steal. Demons come to rob. You know what some people say? You know, I don't serve God anymore because I lost my business. What has the Lord got to do with that? I lost my business. I don't serve God anymore because I lost my family. What has God got to do with that? God's a family man. He's a good God, isn't he? So then who's stealing from you? Who is stealing? Demons come to? Okay, let's look at the scripture, John 10.10. 10. Let's have a look. Look at what it says. This is Jesus speaking, by the way. Listen, this is not the writer, uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John, or Paul, or, or any of those people, Haggai. This is Jesus speaking. This is God the Word. God incarnate speaking. This is what he says. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. So when you destroy your house, male or female, when you destroy your house, what spirit is working in you? The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and life to the, to the full. So if you think back on things that happened to you in your life, just think back. Was it God? You know, when, when, when you fell pregnant out of wedlock, was it God that did it? When you lost your business, was it God? When you destroy your home, was it God? When we get into addictions, is it God? When we beat other people up, is it God? When we rob from other people and steal from other people, is it God? How can it be? When Jesus said, the thief. The thief of what? Church. The thief of what? The thief of mankind. I'm going to show you now. The thief of mankind. You see, demons come to rob and steal. They're on assignment from Satan. We need to understand that. Why are they on assignment? Because Satan cannot be omnipresent. He's not God. Amen? They can live in you, in me, live everywhere in the whole world, be in every church, be in every household. God is omnipresent. Satan is not. He's a created being. The devil can be only in one place at one time. So Satan has a structure. Don't think that the devil doesn't have a structure. He's got a structure. He sits there at the top and he's got his demons at the bottom and they have structure. Ephesians chapter 6. Powers, principalities, and spiritual host of wickedness in high places is structure. That is the structure. And he disperses. I can tell you now, and I mean to scare you, that every one of you here has a demon assigned to you. You have a demon assigned to you that is assigned to destroy your life. That's why you better make sure that you're a child of God. Amen. There was a demon assigned to that boy. You could see it, and we're going to talk about it tonight. But so the devil has got the structure, and so you know what? These things have to report to him. Demons come to rob and to steal. Their assignment is to rob people of their lives. There's a lot of people that have died prematurely before their time. They have been robbed of their lives. People drink themselves into oblivion. People take drugs and they never wake up from that addiction. 
All kinds of stuff that happened. The assignment to rob people of their livelihoods. The assignment is to rob people of their health. The assignment is to rob people of their wealth. The assignment is to rob people of their families. The assignment is to rob people of their possessions. The assignment is to rob people of their futures. The assignment is to rob people of a relationship with God. I'll say it again and we're going to close. You see, the devil can rob, but Jesus can restore. The assignment is to rob people of their lives. How many times wasn't mine almost taken? I stand here by grace. And Afrikaans klink het baie beter. Ek sta in die so by Jerusse genade. And that's true. I stand here by grace. I know I'm supposed to be dead many times over. I'm standing here by grace. I'm, my goal today, and we are going to complete it tonight, my goal today is to expose to you your common enemy. That's my goal. And tonight we'll take it further. We'll go deeper. So that you can get rid of what you need to get rid of in your life. You know what? The thing that's been holding the blessing from you, the thing that has been holding the wealth from you, the thing that has been holding your happiness and joy from you, the peace that has been that, that, that has been uh, uh, taking, a, that, that, that's been causing you to be lonely, all of those things. These are all demon spirits designed to make us unhappy. The assignment is to rob people of their health. The assignment is to rob people of very important to one, their families. Their families. Devil, if, if the devil if the devil can destroy a family he'll destroy the legacy of the family the legacy the Bible speaks about us having as men as fathers the Bible speaks about us having arrows in our quiver what is what is an arrow for an arrow is put into a bow pulled back and catapulted forward amen to achieve something and us as men we've been blessed with it arrows in our quiver this is what a church is about this is what a church fights for it's for families and for people that's what we're about. We, listen, if we're about anything else, we are wrong. This is what we're about. It's about the people that are not here yet. Because as much as Satan assigns, God assigns. People to people. People to people. You know why you like this church, those of you that are here? Why you like this church? is because you've been assigned to this church. That's why you like the church. So if any one of you have had your life stolen up to this point, your livelihood stolen, your health stolen, your wealth stolen, your family stolen, your possession stolen, your future stolen, your relationship with God stolen, won't you stand we pray? Whatever is resident that doesn't belong there. I want to ask you to give it up. Because if you don't give it up, guess what? You remember, Jesus said, come out of him and never enter him again. And here's the thing that we don't get rid of the resident spirits. They come back. I'm going to ask Pastor Sulita to pray. Father, we thank you for your throne of grace. And we thank you that it's only by grace that we are able to enter God. We thank you for the word of this morning. Thank you, Lord, that the word spoke loudly and clearly this morning. 
Father. And God, we realize that the enemy has come, Lord, today or in the past. He's come, Lord, to rob and to kill and to destroy. And so, Father, there where the locusts have eaten, there where the canker worm has eaten, we pray, Father, that you will bring restoration. Father, we bring our homes before you. We bring our marriages before you. We bring our children before you. We bring our grandchildren before you this morning, God. And Father, even as the word went out, Lord, we know that they are the arrows in our quivers, God. And Father, this morning we pray that as parents, as we shoot them out into the future, that they will become a fiery dart God. They will become the legacy Father. They will be the lineage. They will be the generation that will stand for God, will stand for Jesus, will be a mouthpiece in the last days God. So, Father, I pray where the enemy has come and he's stolen health from our bodies, from our families, we command him to restore tenfold again this day, God. We speak life, we speak healing, we speak resurrection into our marriages, into our finances. There where there's no hope this morning, God, I pray, Lord, that you will bring hope because you, the God of hope, Father, and Father, I pray you will strengthen our hearts, God, that you are with us, that you are for us. Thank you that you are busy transforming us one degree at a time. And thank you that you are drawing us into your light. Help us to separate ourselves from the world because we are in the world, but we are not a part of this world. Amen. Father, we are in your kingdom. And God, your word says that the light will not mix with the dark. So Lord, help us to bring that great divide, that great separation. Jesus. And that we will follow you and that we will love you. So Father, we thank you. It's a new day. Wherever the enemy is stolen, we speak blessings speak peace, we speak multiplication, Jesus. and we give you honor and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And so this morning, before we leave here, if there's anybody in this place, and, and Jesus Christ is not the center of your life, you have never accepted him into your life, or maybe you did accept him and you backslid a long time ago, and you want to recommit your life for Dedicate your life to the Lord this morning. Won't you raise your hand and we'll pray with you before we go. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, I thank you that you have touched my heart. I thank you for your spoken word. And God, I respond to it. I ask you to forgive me of all my sins and to remove it as far as the east is from the west. That you will put it, Lord, into the sea of forgetfulness. I now receive you as my Lord and as my master. I am your child. I give you praise. I give you glory. I give you honor. I magnify your name. Amen. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory, with exceeding joy to God our Savior who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power both now and forevermore. And so as we go, Lord, may you cover us with your precious blood until we meet again in Jesus' name.